Hi, this is Dr. Scott Young, and we have Dr. Laura Mount here, and we're going to do a new series, and she doesn't even know I'm going to say it this way, but we're going to do a new series called Audiology Debate Series, okay? So it's going to be kind of fun. We'll have some fun with these things, and we'll be, we'll be putting them on as we go along. These are mostly made for audiologists, but by the way, patients can actually see the insides of what, what happens to people. So what we're first going to talk about is bundle versus unbundle, okay? And you're also going to see a different way of debating. Now, I want to take you back because I'm almost 56, <clears throat> so I've got that, you know, in between pretty close to baby boomer kind of mentality. And um, the, it, it go back in time, Saturday Night Live, Dan Aykroyd and Jane Curtin. And they used to do the weekend update mm -hmm. and, and they would call each other like you ignorant dot, 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 dot. I don't know if you've ever heard that one. Have you? I haven't. I haven't seen it. I, I used to watch, but I haven't heard that one. And it was, it's a, I, I wouldn't watch the new ones, but I watched the very old ones and they would, they would, you know, they would do it really like you ignorant dah, dah, dah. and then, and, and then, you know, you pig. And, and it was really funny because of the way they did it. Um, and I think one of the things that our culture has done is elevate the uh, argument above the relationship. And when we mm -hmm. elevate the argument above the relationship that, that two professionals have for one another, then we get mad about things. And, and, and we, you know, we do that with, you know, with a football team and we do that with political conversations and we do that, you know, sometimes with religious conversations, but we don't even realize that you know, we're supposed to have do this in love. And the, and the re response is, is I'm not talking about sex love. I'm talking about friendship love, the brotherly love, okay? And <clears throat> I think when we do that, we're going to see a different kind of response to one another. And you're going to mm -hmm. find out what we're going to look at. So <clears throat> first off, I'm going to let... Uh, Actually, can I add something into sure, that real yeah. quick? Because I, this is a big thing that I've learned because I've, um, I've lived all over the United States and I've been exposed to so many different cultures and so many different people. And I know I moved from Las Vegas down to Gulfport, Mississippi and talk about different culture shocks. And what I realized is there's so, we're so different across the United States and just even from state to state, there's so many different just kind of traditions, cultures, way of doing things. And so a lot of times, a lot of people perceive actions as they, they take a lot of offense to things or different, they don't realize it's just a different culture thing. So I think one of the biggest things I learned over the years is there's a huge difference between between perceptions and intentions. Yep. And I think the perception of what we feel versus what was intended, yep. that is where I think the majority of the miscommunication is at. Right. Because we have a lot of good intentions, but sometimes the way it's perceived yep. is a whole different way, you know. Exactly. So I think a lot of times if we can just kind of, I think that's, if we can stop the elevation, the escalation, a lot of these arguments are just this talk and we could say, here's my intent. You know, and I don't want you to perceive this way or just having maybe starting more of a baseline there, if that makes any sense. Right. And, and, and I think there's uh, there's some strong debates that people can get into and, mm -hmm. uh, and they can get passionate about it, but yes. they can walk out and, and, and clap hands with one another afterward or whatever that thing that you want to do. And, and I think when you do that, <clears throat> it becomes um, a biblical term actually called iron sharpening iron. And, and, and people get really upset about biblical conversations, but the rant response no. is, that is that's the sharpening of both blades so that they're more effective in battle, in essence, okay? So it actually is an art of war conversation that mm -hmm. you know, uh, Sen Tzu actually talked about. So, so I'm going to let uh, Dr. Laura go ahead and hit the unbundle concept. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I'd like her to introduce hers a little bit and say... Um, some of the features of that, and then we'll we'll kind of do mine. Okay. As far as unbundling is concerned, and do I explain what bundled is first, or um, are you? I'll just that? explain the unbundle too. Well, and so the one. unbundled idea is because when we're dealing with hearing aids and dealing with the whole fitting, we have the actual cost of goods portion, the actual device, and then we have what we bring in because every device comes to us as a blank slate. 
And so we take that device and then we use our skills and our expertise to do the programming of it. And so unbundling is kind of separating out the price of the hearing aids versus the actual price of the services and how that works out, you know, in the occasion. So basically is, you know, just finding a way to separate the service from the product so you understand what you're paying for and the value behind that. Right. So in the bundle concept, you have, we have the, some of the similar make, makeup, okay? <clears throat> we all have to hit, you know, the bottom line conversation of the cost of goods. Mm-hmm. I want to throw something, you know, as a, as a modifier out because one um, insurance company called me one time and they said, we would like you to be on our insurance and you're our prefer- preferred provider. And that's like, wait, what? I, stop, t- you know, stop buttering me up before you want me to do something for you. And uh, so they said, well, we need to have it at 5% over invoice cost. And I was like, are you smoking weed? You know, and, and I'm like, and, and I said that to the guy on the phone, he's like, what do you mean? And, I, and I'm like, listen, I mean, you know, so I got, I got to get like, you know, hundred bucks or something like that. And I got to do all the services for the lifetime. And he goes, yeah. And I was like, shut up, go away. You know, and, mm-hmm. and you know, that's, that's an undervalued concept. So one of the things <clears throat> that happens basically on the bundled is that what we do is we take all the services and all the setup that we that we believe that we're going to do and with mm-hmm. our patient and kind of bundle it up together so that they have one package and and that is that is one way of handling that kind of thing. By the way, both of them there's no ethical or unethical thing on right. this. This is you know, this is just a thought process, a business concept. And there are effective ways of looking at both of those things. And you'll find at the end, which one we actually use. It's going to be funny, <laughs> pretty funny when you see that too. So, um, okay. So why don't you jump in to some of the anti-points that if you were, you know, because you're taking the unbundle, why don't you do mm-hmm. some of the, the cons against the bundle? Oh, against the bundle portion of it. I mean, there's, because I've lived all over the United States, um, there's been a lot of different things. I mean, like we have, I mean, I think like if you, a lot of times we compare the bundled model to orthodontia and, but the thing is, is having a child that's gone through braces, the orthodontia rituals are very similar. It's like, there's so many visits, there's so many follow-ups. And I think what I kind of realized most is that we're trying to, I feel like we're trying to standardize a level of care for a patient that can't be standardized. And so bundled, honestly, I love the parts I do like about bundled is the fact that I could be creative. I have freedom. I have freedom to do what I want. And it's not, it's not hurting the patient where, cause they can come in limited times, make sure we get it right. But as I've gone throughout my career, I've also realized is like, there are people that have paid equal amounts to some of these other people did, but didn't use my time nearly as much. And it's, mm-hmm. and there's some things like, you know, And especially when I've been in very rural areas where you know that this cost is significant for them. And it was a big, you know, where some people $5,000 or $3,000 is not big of a deal. These people are borrowing money and they're doing whatever they can do for their hearing health care. And you just want to make sure that are we truly being representative of the amount of services that they're going to use over the long term? There's so many factors to take into consideration. We have people that are getting older. Are they, you know, some people are terminal. Is it fair to charge somebody a whole bundled amount when somebody may be dying of cancer in two years? Or you have your snowbirds that you know that they're going to be going to Arizona or Florida and they're only going to need your services half the year. So I do think there's definitely something we need to start modifying and not necessarily look at it as a whole bundled amount. And I think the way people unbundle things, I think that's where some of the issue is. I think we can have a very successful unbundled model that works for everybody so we can actually more tailor it to the patient's needs as opposed to where bundled is you pay all upfront of all these services right. that you may not even utilize and i think it, that's really the, the biggest con against it here's the cool part of what she just said is that when i see for instance we'll just use the snowbird because we can pick it you know mm-hmm. a billion of those things the snowbird's a really tough one um you know, for the bundled people. And they can't really fully answer that. Um, Hmm. And so, you know, if you live in Arizona, 
um, you probably have to think about the unbundling concept because we know that they're going to snowbird to Minnesota or whatever, you know, whatever that circumstance might be. Because, you know, and <clears throat> I will say this because both of us have repped, I think you repped in Arizona a little bit. Both no, of us I didn't repped. do Arizona, but I've repped in Las Vegas and California. Yeah, you know, so I know the area. Thing. It's and and yeah. so what happens is during the winter months, those those companies actually have tons of patients come in the door. And in the summer months, they have mm -hmm. nothing. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's just this big, massive fluctuation. <clears throat> so therefore, that's that's a powerful point. Now, on the what I would say are the, you know, the cons of the um, you know, so we're she's talking about some of the pros on that. So I'm gonna do the pros of the bundled effect, and then we'll hit some more con points and go back and forth, and we'll, we'll be free form on this thing too. When I think about the bundle concept, and I'm looking down my notes here, so I'm not looking at, you know, nowhere land, but it brings the charges together um, okay. so that we have, you know, a, a, a uniformity conversation. And, and to give you an example, uh, <clears throat> we have, you know, we say to our patients, um, you know, I've had this long, you know, running debate, and we will talk about this one. I probably will be on one of our, our things about pricing a little bit closer. Okay, um, but we say to our patients, you know, hearing aids for a pair run run from twenty five hundred dollars, five, six, and seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars. When we say that, it becomes a statement that, oh, I at least have a, a way to frame what I'm paying for, and mm -hmm. so that is a frame point to be able to start with that. Um, it reduces the long-term costs within yes. hearing aids. Now there are outsider concepts that hit us um, and, and they don't want to even talk about bundle versus unbundled. Um, and they're called third-party organizations. Mm -hmm. So insurances try to show up and bring in their unbundled thing. And then they expect you to take pennies on the dollar to, for, to mm -hmm. fix their, all of their, their idiot ideas. Um, and, and we have a, a, a resound and, and we've had Oticon and Phonak and all these different companies that have bought into little things and think okay. that they want to send the scraps out to, you know, Dr. Scott or Dr. Laura. And we say, uh, uh, I'm not doing it for, you know, pennies on the dollar kind of thing. And, and so, <clears throat> you know, it, it creates the, another thing too, it creates a, a value for the patient. And now mm -hmm. the one cool thing about, now she's talking about value. I'm talking about value in a different way because what we're doing is now we're having to, um, for business owners such as the two of us, and we've had employees under us, she's had you know more at times and, and I've had, I have more now, but mm -hmm. it also creates a, a lesser amounts of values for each of your employees to do. Because when you create a value or you create a proposition, it's actually a procedure, okay? okay? So think about a procedure. You're going, how do I do this, okay? And, and in audiology, you're gonna, you're gonna uh, if, if you're a patient watching this, you're gonna have struggles to understand this, but I'd say, <clears throat> what is the procedure to making an ear impression? And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, you would talk through that procedure. You might even write a procedure, a policy or procedure kind of thing to create for doing impressions, okay, or for you know making the order or different kinds of things. Well, every the the bundled approach is a much more simple procedure for the yes. audiologist to do, and and so it also reduces the patient's um, costs, frankly, down the road because mm -hmm. we you know one of the things the most powerful parts about the bundled effect. And actually, Dr. Laura actually, you know, admitted this, this point, this is the cool part about this, mm -hmm. you can admit the other side without getting mad about it. But the, the powerful point is, I, I see a patient come in the door, and we think that they're, you know, they, they should be pretty straightforward. And we find, holy cow, they've got some crazy thing in their ear canal, we could never predict. They got a crazy response to hearing that we never could have predicted. Mm -hmm. Or they've got some some uh, some circumstances like, for instance, one of the most powerful problem. I mean, one of the things we're we're working with the patient right now is she said or she understood uh, her cell phone technology, and we found out that she didn't, and she keeps coming back with problems with unhooking 
of the Bluetooth and issues with right. that. And we're having to find creative solutions. How could we know that without knowing what her, her phone was at the time? And then she changed it, got the wrong kind of phone. And, and that's where the bundle approach actually is saving her a, a lot of money over the years. Sure. She's, she's not been paid for, I mean, not been charged with that kind of thing too. So that's, that's my point. But why don't you hit about some of the, the cons a little bit stronger, maybe about, uh, you know, against the bundled approach. Do you want to hit that one? I think because, I, I mean, our industry is a really, really interesting thing. I mean, like, and I, I don't like to, I, I use car analogies, even though I hate the fact that the car salesman, yeah. but like when we go and we actually physically see a car, you can, um, you can tell the difference for Toyota between an Avalon, for a Camry, the Corolla, you know, the different things, because there's definite, you know, different variations, but hearing needs are different. They're, the average consumer, there's no way by looking at a hearing aid that they'd have any clue what technology is inside. Yeah, so how can you tell me what, what that is right there? Yes. So you know? is that an entry level? Is that a mid-level? You know, so I think what the, I think as far as everything is concerned, I think bundling, unbundling gives us an option of more transparency and it right. actually shows and it strips things down because like, because there's so much variation and especially being on the industry side and hearing what other people charge for hearing aids, you know, there's people that are, you know, spending $5,000, but they're getting entry level product where they go to another provider and they're spending $5,000 for an advanced product. And right. so I think it's more for the transparency side of things. It's mm -hmm. kind of breaking the cost down. So it's not so ambiguous, yeah. you know, it's not. And I think that as far as unbundled is concerned, I think that people get in their ideas, in their head, they take their revenue that they need per hour. And then they say, this is how much I need to make. And they charge a visit. I don't think I said I, the way that unbundle has been presented is not, I don't think the correct way to do it. Correct. And I don't like what third parties have done. And actually, if I, if you don't mind, I'd like to yeah. share some of my experience because yeah. I was actually dead in on the Unitron side during the third parties because we actually were the private label. And I think this is this has been a very, very frustrating point for me in the industry because we've always been pretty bundled as an industry. So you can't make that switch just like that third party without yeah. businesses going under. And that is, I think, why we've been fighting it so hard because it went from we have all of this to we can have enough revenue to move forward, to sustain our offices, to become audiologists. And all of a sudden the third parties came in slash the fitting fees and fifths to six to, you know, it's crazy to where yeah. we don't even, a lot of times these fitting fees don't even call, you know, cover our revenue per hour. So we've had to kind of figure out another model. If you have to participate in third parties for some of these, how to even make it profitable right. to where you can even stay afloat. So I think that the third party idea is a complete unbundled model, but is a very flawed model and so I, I so I think that. there's a way to do it I, so I, I think unbundling is like there's a way and I've played around with a lot of different things but I think it's kind of like taking the patient taking whether they, and they may have the stabular stuff they may have tinnitus as well and not treating just as a hearing aid and a hearing loss but treating the whole body Yep. And kind of like we're dealing as a more audiological <laughs> therapy, treating this as a true medical model. So does this patient need tinnitus therapy services? Right. That's a different set of, you know, and that's, they're going to require a lot more than the average person with just a little noise notch at three to four K. Yep. And so that's kind of what I like there is like, I have a patient really, I don't need a lot of work. It's pretty maintained. They just need a little bit of help. They don't need me a lot. Is it really fair for them to pay the same amount as someone who has tinnitus, vestibular therapy, that needs vestibular therapy, all this other stuff right. that goes along with it? You know, so how do we create that model and make it to where we're treating as a true medical individualized the patient? Yep. And so, and I think uh, I think one of the other um, the points that I'm going to hit on the on the set on the opposite side of that is. When we talk about bundle versus unbundle, we try to pull over the physician model. And, and what you don't know is that physicians actually get paid for a billion different little codes in there, right? right. And so, and, and they're getting paid for every little thing. Correct. And, and, and so you go, and, and so they're adding up all these little <clears throat> charge points and they're coming up with a, with, with a system of, Hey, we're going to get this much for you know a new patient. We're going to get this much for an existing extra workup patient. Okay. But then they add up all these little things. And so when you go to the hospital and you have a major medical issue, 
you know, um, it, it becomes, and this is the part that I struggle with, with the unbundle is you walk mm -hmm. in and you go, I know it's transparency, but how many different things occurred inside of that? Okay. Did I get to watch? Hey, what did I get to pick that and that and that? Mm -hmm. and, and Dr. Laura knows a little bit about this, but you know, two years ago, I almost died in a hospital in Denver. And, um, you know, I walked out of there in three days with a miracle healing. Okay. It's another kind of interesting concept, but one of the things that I found, and I almost lost my lunch when I get the first bill and it's $142,000. Yes. And now, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm, you know, trying to not hyperventilate and puke, you know, right on, on the floor. And then I, you know, I, when I realized that the insurance, you know, knocked it down to 25,000, I asked this question and this is one of the problems with the unbundled versus bundled. So how mm -hmm. much was the actual cost if 25,000 is what they're going to accept? Exactly. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and we can't answer that because mm -hmm. we try to pull, you know, I mean, and, and you know, res with respect in that, what she's saying there, we try to pull, you know, unbundle and, and try to do this, but but, you know, the hospitals have unbundled, right? And yeah, I'd say, well, you know, even when you look through some of the cost points, <clears throat> even with the knockdown, you know, they charge this and they got this. But I, I, I asked the question about uh, three or four of them because, you know, I, listen, I'm a medical professional. I understand what, what the tests were run. And I kept asking these questions about like, you know, what about these four different, you know, charges? Why were they there? And mm -hmm. see, I didn't get a chance to say yes or no to that. And, and that's some of the problem that comes up. And I think, I, I think one of the cons, that is part of the cons that kind of come up with, with patients. When we, one of the cons that I would say toward the unbundle effect that I have had, you know, massive conversations. And this is why I don't want you to listen just to Dr. Laura or Dr. Scott. I don't mm -hmm. want you to listen to, you know, ADA or AAA that are trying to push um, the unbundled model necessarily mm -hmm. because they have an agenda. Mm -hmm. do, do you catch the agenda? Mm -hmm. There's a massive agenda that's pushing these things. And so I had this mm -hmm. conversation with an audiologist, happened to be in Phoenix. And she said, <clears throat> we went to an unbundled model. She tells me the whole story. I didn't tell her any of my, my thoughts. I just said, so what do you feel about? Oh, it's really doing great. And I said, I understand. And she walked through the things and how we're actually doing more hearing aids. We're helping more people and we're charging less. And I, and I was like, okay, is that a good or bad thing? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, and she, well, that's a great thing. I mean, we're actually more competitive and I'm going to hit that one in half a second. And then I said, Actually, I want to, can I interject? Because oh, I do sure. want to, I, this brings up a really good point. Okay. Yeah. So this is where I, I think people underestimate the amount of emotional, mental power, brain power it takes to be an audiologist oh, yeah. because we're not just yeah. dealing with, we're dealing with so much things and, and trying to interpret sound and someone's perception of sound and how to fine tune it to a musical instruments concern. I, and I've run in clinics in, where it's, you know, we are, I've been at a nonprofit. So we're, it's, it's all about volume because you're getting through, you do a lot of, you know, third, you know, you do a lot of Medicaid and different things like that. It was a wonderful experience, but I'm going to tell you physically and mentally, I'm only capable of doing so many hearing aids a month before feeling like I'm brain dead yep. because it takes that much out of you. So I, to validate your point, you are hundred percent correct. I don't know as audiologists, because I know if we're going to truly be audiologists and treat everybody individually, you can't have that, you know, blanket approach, but that's what it turns into. It turns yep. into an assembly line, yep. you know, when you do more and it's like, you really only can handle so much. I feel like before we can't go any further and everybody's thresholds of what they can handle is a little bit different, but I do know there's huge burnout places like Costco, there's huge burnouts and like just the, you know, and so I don't think necessarily volume and doing more and help because like, you know, that's the answer either. Yeah. So, and I'm going to hit the Costco effect in half a second too, because mm -hmm. I think it's, it's completely relevant and it's the driver of some of these people's decisions. They both make a decision. I'm like, listen, you're the doctor of audiology. You need to start having a decision, which means you need to be studying this stuff. 
I mean, there are bookshelves over here that I have of, of, of business concepts. I've been studying all of my life. I've been doing this for 32 okay. years and I'm never going to stop studying in my field and in, you know, my other fields of, of, of interest. But so, so back to that, that point, when she, I was talking to her about her, you know, unbundled effect, I said, ask, I want you to talk to me in three years and tell me how it works. And she goes, what do you mean? And I said, well, when you get outside of your three-year window, and that's what Shurs was, she, you know, knocked her prices down from here to here, and then mm -hmm. has a three-year window, and she clearly delineated what she did, and she said this, she, I, I said, she goes, what do you mean? And I said, well, well what if they walk in, you know, and they're paying $3,000 now when they used to pay $5,000. I'm making up numbers, right? I mean, I don't remember, I don't even know what she told me the numbers were. And, and, and when the patient goes, you know, but now I need you to do X, Y, and Z. And then you go, well, you got to pay for it. And, and they go, yeah, but I paid $3,000. And now the audiologist go, well, yeah, you could have paid $5,000, right? But now you have to pay per services. Well, what if I don't really want to do that? And I, mean, I have a really good example for you to verify that one too. So I couldn't believe we did it. So a lot of times when you're working on the manufacturer side, because you're competing against sales, sometimes it's a race to the bottom. And I remember when the Federal Blue Cross Blue Shield came out. Yep. And so one of the manufacturers convinced this one major company that because they had like five or six offices. So basically the Federal Blue Cross Blue Shield benefit is either 2000 or 2500 And at 2, that point it was half, it was like, and it, yeah, where it goes and it was happening every year. So what they did is they did the volume model. So they did massive advertising and they got so many, I mean, it was like, they were seeing hundreds of patients. I mean, they were fitting, they fit like a thousand hearing aids within like three months. It was crazy numbers in an area because where we were out of in Alabama was a very federal blue cross blue shield area. So, but the thing was they under, so they kind of went through, we're going to get you hearing aids for what your benefit will cover, no out-of-pocket expense. Right. So they worked really hard. So you just conditioned those patients now Yep. To only pay twenty five hundred dollars, and I'm yep. like, it's not sustainable, yep. and it's not a sustainable model. And the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, there's so much work that goes into it. So, to very much validate the point. It's like, yeah, they did great for that one year, but now your patients didn't pay for anything out of yeah. it. What's going to happen next time? And what happens if the benefit goes away? Yeah, and, and, <laughs> you it's, and it's do you, do you see the do you see the conundrum? And one of the things. <laughs> So, so as we start to wrap some of this stuff up here, what I want to share with you is you need to be thinking this stuff through. And, mm -hmm. and by the way, if you live, <clears throat> I'm in Tulsa, she's in Vegas. And California. And California too. Um, and no, I'm, yeah. Oh, in California. Okay. So, but, but her set of circumstances is going to be very different than Tulsa. Mm -hmm. Tulsa <clears throat> is a very cheap area to live in. Okay. Right. So, you know, salaries are going to be reduced. Therefore, you know, that, mm -hmm. that plays a role in it. I have friends of mine in West Palm Beach, uh, Florida, and the people there, if you live there, you making a ton of money. And so they almost never unbundle that, that thing. And so, you know, this is, this is the, the area. So now you got to be thinking about what is your area and one concept mm -hmm. can't fix it. Correct. And when you come up with federal mandates, I always kind of blanch at federal mandates on mm -hmm. because they also come through the insurance companies. And I say, yep. uh, they don't have the, the right to tell someone in Tulsa, someone in Vegas, someone in Denver, what mm -hmm. to do. For California too. Yeah, California. exactly. You, you, can't, you cannot make the comparisons. And I, I, get, I get irritated when I say, you know, talk about you know, people even in uh, some of the consulting businesses like Audigy and, and uh, AHA mm -hmm. and all these other ones, and they try to make comparisons. And I go, you know, you can't compare me with this business because, Absolutely. you know, it is, it is based upon the area and the amount of, you know, business that we do and, you know, the, the market penetration. And there's a whole bunch of different kind of factors. And so <clears throat> when you get those- The factors, type of clinic. Because there, you you different patients gravitate right. to different types of clinics. There's a patient population that goes to a hospital setting. Right. There's some that prefer a private practice setting. Some people go, you know, 
all, you know, all patients are not equal. Everybody does, they choose their medical care in different routes, and, and you know, and so you can't five, put this cookie cutter approach on it. Right. If there's, well, six to 10,000, you know, audiologists, it, you know, practice locations in America, maybe, um, you know, we, we have the ability to model a demographic for each one of us to have okay. the comparisons. And then, but what we haven't done that as an industry uh, to kind of say, you know what, Dr. Laura, Dr. Scott are pretty darn close. Maybe you guys should be talking to one another about okay. why you do what you do. And so I'm going to, I'm going to uh, say my little Costco point, and then we're going to kind of wrap up and kind of share this little thing. So when people try to say, you know, they use uh, tried and true conversations and they say, well, and she used this conversation called race to the bottom. And mm -hmm. so we think that we need to compete with um, a, a low ball company mm -hmm. uh, by, by using the unbundled approach. And mm -hmm. so I see this all the time. And, and this is this is a conversation that ADA has, American Disabilities, or not American. Just uh, an audiologist, you're good. Yeah, <laughs> and then American, yeah. Uh, and, and so ADA and then American Academy of Audiology try to say, and they try to push the unbundled approach as a global conversation. And I say, wait a second, let me tell you kind of one of the things that happens. Costco actually sells their hearing aids at 11% over invoice. Mm -hmm. Their invoices are so low, no mm -hmm. one can compete with their invoicing. Correct. When they go to Unitron, <coughs> right now they hit Phonak, and they used to have uh, Siemens, what I now call Signia. Um, mm -hmm. Those guys give them prices that are ungodly low. And then they price it at 11% over invoice. And I think they probably price a little slightly higher than that. But you because I know the cost of goods on what what they were got in it's significantly higher than they yeah, get but, a little uh, higher margin, but not as much. I know what you're but, saying. Yeah, but, not, but yeah. everything you know tends to be so they, they do kind of price it up there, but there's no way that if I, I take my my products of, of the top end hearing aids and seven thousand dollars, I cannot ever compete with a cost. Yeah, you can't. And frankly, I don't care about competing with Costco because here's Correct. the fascinating part. Um, we have not gone away from the bundled approach <clears throat> on most patients. Mm -hmm. And yet in 2016, uh, Costco showed up. If price was the only thing that would have affected them, we should be out of business. And yet my business has grown every year since that point in time. Mm -hmm. Why? Longer conversation than that. So it and isn't yeah. about price. Correct. And, and it never has been for the most has. part. That's not, it's not that <clears throat> we've done the studies and we've done the research for years. The number one contributing factor for lack of adoption of hearing aids has not never been price. And, and so we, we need to identify price is not the conversation that we should be having. Correct. There is a better conversation. It's called value. Mm -hmm. And if we don't approach this as a value uh, add, add point, then we're not really answering the question. So we're attacking under bundle versus bundle. And I'm only unbundle and you guys are all jerks. And I'm like, <laughs> calm it down, right? So you want to want to jump in there with that too? I, you know, I just like at this point, I think there's just there's multiple ways to do things. And I've just <laughs> always been a very outside the box thinker. I don't like uniformity. I just I so I always so I think it's just more just understanding why certain models are the way they are and what you're getting with those models and how you compete. So we're not a race to the bottom. So technically on paper, if you were to compare Costco and us together, we look the same. And that's what I was trying to get these buying groups to understand. It's like they have the three-year warranty. They have the last time. They have unlimited service. But people right. don't realize that is not all is the same. So I was, I've struggled for years. I'm like, and I have all these people. Everybody says service. They, what differentiates them? What's their value? Service. Yeah. But nobody can define it. And I said, I've been telling, I get so upset with the uh, buying groups and everything. Like, make it tangible. Y'all have to make it tangible. I said yep. this, I said, because on paper, this thing, you could sit there and say all day long, this, these things, but we've got to make it tangible for the patient. So when they walk in, and I'm not talking a big fancy office and all these different things. I'm talking when they walk in and they have the interaction with the audiologist, they understand what they're paying for. And right. that is what I'm trying to guide in my office is that 
what you get with me is so different because I'm trying to make it fit, feel tangible to them, yep. the difference. And I think, and I think that's the powerful point. And by the way, did you know something? I'm going to reveal something. Do you know that uh, Hearing Solution Centers in Tulsa and Dr. Laura in California? Both it's California use, and Las Vegas. I'm both Vegas, places. <laughs> both, both of us use unbundle and bundle at the same time. Mm -hmm. for different circumstances you correct well, what you know yeah. you're just you're playing with the devil and and and, and the angels same time like no 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 there's no, a I, time and place for everybody and i think exactly. it's a unique solution you know and so you might say well that just sounds unreasonable and wrong and everything else and you you need to understand why we do what we do and there are pit places let me give you an unbundled concept we have patients who come from the va Mm -hmm. And they got their hearing aids from the VA, but the VA in the Tulsa area is a problem. Um, and it's not because they're bad people, but because right. the process is bad. And yes. um, they have been giving their hearing aids in a box. And I wish I had a little box here, but they walk up to the patient with a box in their car, walk up to the bar box, and they have basic fitted that hearing aid and give the box to them and say, give us a call. Like, what yeah and 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 we have seen these and they they claim COVID is their reason for that that point but it's just laziness and okay. so we have actually created an unbundled concept of we will do fitting fee and we will do these fees and these these are the things that we do that absolutely and there is a very reasonable answer to a, a situation in your market that you might have to do. Now, I will tell you this, uh, <clears throat> the Tucson, uh, uh, now this is years ago, but <clears throat> the Tucson VA was one, of, <clears throat> excuse me, was one of the best VAs I had ever in, interacted mm -hmm. with. And so there are amazing VAs and there are some bad VAs and that's right. just, you know, regional and maybe the people with that, that circumstance too. So, um, so I think what you're what you're seeing is that what we've done, what Dr. Laura and I have done, is admitted each other's faults and and um, things that happen inside of the concepts with that too. So I think mm -hmm. if we look at that, I think that will help you kind of get an idea. Do you have do you have a statement you want to jump in and, and say at the end here? No, I'm good. I think it just. I think there's. A, hold on, real quick. Sorry, Tony. I had someone walk in and fix my life. I just, I, I just, I think that just in general, I think that um, I've studied this, I've studied this industry a very long time and I have a very, um, you know, I've, I've practiced in ENT, I've practiced in retail, I've had my own private practice, I've done, um, do the CMP side, I've seen the workman's comp side, I've been in the deep south and very rural areas where my per capita income was 20 something thousand a year. Then I've lived in California, which is very different than the Bay Area. Big. I mean, so I have a really good idea. And I think that in general, we need to have not, there's not, I think what we have to got, we have to get away from, there's not a right or wrong answer to anything. I, I, and I think that I'm a gray, I'm a world of gray. And I have a world of options and I'm a big believer. There's always a creative solution. And right. I think that we just, I said, for the ones that want to work together with us, I would love just audiologists to get together and say, there's really no right or wrong way. We just have different ways of doing things and let's bridge them all together and come up with so many different concepts because our patient population is so unique. Yes. And we understand different things about different populations. And imagine how powerful we would be if we bring all of that together and come up with great solutions to be able to make that to where we, we are seen as a real medical profession. And I think I think we've got to do that, but but it all starts up here. Yep. Um, and and mm -hmm. when we do that as a profession. Correct. Uh, and by the way, this is a struggle for, I mean, these kinds of struggles are in every single profession, whether it's Absolutely. orthodontics, whether it's orthopedics or neurology or in audiology that are, you're going to have this problem that's going to come up and they're keep they need I, i've always said this you need to redefine yourself almost every year and if yes. you're not doing it you're screwing it up so i think that's that we'll, we'll kind of leave it off on that that kind of point i just thanks so much for dr laura for spending some time on that and um as we as we do this we will be doing more of these kinds of little debating things on difficult topics and you'll see how we actually handle them